Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of kind of our Phasmophobia intro mini mini series here. Um, this will be episode three. In episode one, we kind of talked about the van setup, uh, things in the van. Episode two, we kind of went through the ghosts. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how. I go about finding the ghost room, um, getting the ghost room set up and stuff like that. So you're going to kind of get to see what I take in, why I take it in, um, different, different things and stuff that you could possibly take in. Um, when I go into the house, I like, I like looking for kind of where the cursed item is. Um, I like finding the bone and I also have, and I would suggest a very good uh, set of earphones. Um, the earphones I have are really good. It allows me to hear like a door opening or something being thrown, stuff like that. But in this episode, like I said, I'm going to go in. I'm going to show you guys kind of how I how I find the ghost room, things that I'm looking for, and then um, obviously it can be done in different ways, but. Um, when I go in, I like taking in a photo camera, an EMF, and obviously a strong flashlight. You could go in with the thermometer. Um, the only reason I don't is because playing in intermediate, uh, professional, and nightmare, the power isn't on, so the temperature in the house is, is cooler to begin with. Um, most of the time you're going to get a door opening or something thrown um, before the temperature warms up enough to actually use the thermometer. If you're playing with more than one person, uh, the thermometer is nice to take in. Um, I've, I've done it. I've seen people take in video cameras to look for orbs. Um, spirit box too. The only thing you want to be mindful now with the spirit box is the Maroi. Um, the curse that it puts on you comes through the spirit box. So you might want to be a little careful with with taking the spirit box in. But yeah, like as, as far as the starting items go, there isn't really a right or wrong uh, to take in. The one thing you do want to be mindful of though you want to very quickly go into the house. You want to figure out where the ghost room is, and then you want to start setting the ghost room up. So like I said, I usually take a, a photo camera, an EMF, and a strong flashlight. Um, you can kind of look at the optional board. I usually don't do too much as far as optional objectives till after I've, I've set up the ghost room. But like I said, it's all... It's all kind of how you want to play it, but the sooner you find the ghost room, figure out the, what the ghost is, the easier it becomes. Because later on, uh, in Professional and Nightmare, the ghost does have the ability to move rooms. So if you find the ghost room and then you're kind of dawdling around um, quite a bit, losing a lot of sanity, there's a chance that by the time you actually go back, to start gathering evidence for the ghost the ghost has moved on so we can so i'll grab what i need um i'll look at the board just to find where where the power box is so for us right now it's in the garage so i'll kind of i'll kind of sweep the house um i'm looking for signs from the ghost i'm also looking for the bone i'm looking for the cursed item and I'm looking for the power box. So you'll kind of be able to see as as I move my way through the house. Also too, you're going to want to be mindful of where hiding spots are just in case you're dealing with a demon and the demon does um, does hunt you very, very high sanity. I'll just come in here. So that closet door er, is available, so I'll just leave that open. Oh, we have the phone. Take the picture and pick it up. So any room and stuff you go into, you're going to want to make sure that um, you close the door behind you. 
Just if the ghost does open up a door later on, you'll know. You'll be like, hey, wait a minute. Um, I didn't actually leave that door open, so you know the ghost left it open. So there, in the first little area, we've already found the cursed item, which is the mirror. And we found the bone. So we're just going to make sure this is on. We'll now go turn the power on. So we know that the two closets kind of in the living or in the hallway there are open. We're just going to leave that power on. So one, one thing I could do, um, it hasn't really opened the door, so I could ask it to give us a sign. Can you give us a sign, please? See if that helps it open a door. I find too, once you sweep through the house, if you still haven't got noticeable evidence, so like I'm looking to see if there's paint cans knocked down, Ups and stuff out of place. We do have a hiding spot down here. Can you give us a sign, please? See, like it hasn't really done too much so what I'll do so you could use the cursed item um, the cursed item will show you the ghost room and then it'll also um, it will also lower your sanity but if you played the maps enough you'll know kind of where the ghost room is because we haven't touched on ghost room or the cursed objects yet what I'll do is I'll go out so at this point it hasn't opened the door I haven't heard it throw anything so at this point I'll grab the thermometer because I'm by myself I'll bring in another photo camera so now now that the power is on the house is warming up so I'll now sweep the house with um, thermometer so what I'm looking for is a room that registers cooler I find a lot of times in the houses like this if it hasn't opened a door or moved anything you're kind of looking at like a garage ghost or a basement ghost but the ghost could also just be really shy too so you're noticing like for me it's in high teens so as soon as it drops somewhere down to like single digits that's a good indication where you might not always get freezing but so far nothing up here yeah so like pretty much everywhere up here I've been dealing with so here so as soon as we come into the basement temperature drops and we can also see that there's a paint can down there. if I would have been down here when the paint can dropped I could have taken a picture of it to get an interaction photo but because I don't know when that paint can was knocked down um, I don't know if it'll still count so the chair moving is an interaction so you can't take a photo of that and we'll check it with the EMF so we would only have an EMF too okay so now we know the ghost is down here so so I'm gonna go out um, because I play a lot of professional and nightmare it's kind of drilled in me to be cautious of sanity so I'm just gonna look we're still probably yeah, we're still good so now that we know where the ghost is the next thing I usually take in is video camera and dots. So this is going to allow us to see orbs. Um, it's going to allow us to actually see if it walks through the dots or not. 
sometimes you'll see people drop their their flashlight oh. so they can actually take three items in um sometimes i do sometimes i don't but the fact that we're doing the video today i'll kind of keep it as normal as as probably you people you guys what is you're bringing it in so there so we have video camera we have dots down there i'm also gonna take in um i'm gonna take in a book and a, a book and a voice box sorry and then i'll lay the book down but I won't use the voice box right away. Just in case we're dealing with a Maroi, I don't want the curse. So I will put the book down and then I'll just drop the spirit box. So, and you'll have, you also have to remember too, with the spirit box, the lights have to be off and it's easier to see dots and orbs with the lights off. So if you're playing with multiple people, uh, you always want to be mindful when there's nothing wrong with having the lights on when you're in the room. Um, just be mindful when you leave to make sure that you turn off the lights. So if someone's in the van watching, it'll be easier for them. So, and then also too, because I don't know if it's a demon, um, I'm going to bring crucifixes in. So with the ability that the demons can hunt at a very high sanity, they can basically hunt whenever. So the crucifix is just kind of an extra form. There, so that's kind of the ghost room set up. We have both of our cameras. We've got photo cameras, we've got a video camera, dots, oh, it's writing. So as it's writing, you can take a picture. Once it's done writing, you can take a picture. Uh, it will count as two interaction photos. So now that the chair is moving, I can take a picture of the chair again. We still don't have EMF five. Then we can check here. Still don't have, it's only going to 6.1, but we did get uh, ghost writing. So we can click off writing in there. This, uh, this one camera I kind of tossed off to the side. That's just so I know it's full and if I'm playing with somebody else, they as well know it's full. So that they don't grab it trying to take a picture of something and then realize that there's there's no photos left. So because it wrote in the book, um, we will bring in another, another book. But we're just going to go out. We're going to quickly take a look at to see if we can see orbs or dots at all. So that's basically how you set up the ghost room. You're, you're going to want to bring in as much of the stuff on the right hand side as you possibly can. So see with ghost writing there still is the option that it's a Maroi. So I'm going to hope to see if I can see dots or orbs down in this basement. So there you can see an orb go through. So we now know, we now know with the orb gone that Maroi's taken off, so it can either be a mare, a revenant, or a thay. So now when you go through the book, so see, like I clicked on EMF, the three ghosts disappeared. So I know that it's not going to be EMF 5, so we can cross out EMF 5. We know that it's not going to be fingerprints, so we can make sure we can have it so that fingerprints are crossed off. It still could be freezing temps, so we're going to have to check to see if we can see our breath or uh, with the thermometer if it get, gets to freezing. We still could have dots and we still could have spirit box. So now, now that we've kind of ruled out the fact of the Maroi, um, I will go, when I go down there the next time I will use, um, I will use the spirit box. So we'll take a book to replace the one and I'll take a dots to set it up in that back kind of corner there. And then we still do have the one camera down. So if it decides to write in the book again, we can take pictures or if it decides to move the chair or if it wants to be nice and show itself. There, so we'll just replace this book. We can just throw this one off to the side. Put that dots there. 
But now, now that we know it's not a Maroi, so I'll use the box. Where are you? How old are you? Are you friendly? So if you notice on the spirit box in the upper left corner, you'll see the mic icon light up black. That lets you know that the voice box is actually picking up your voice. Once you ask it a question, um, there's an X to the right. There's an X and a ghost. If it's an X, it means that the spirit box has heard you, but the ghost decided not to answer. If it comes up as a ghost icon, then that's the actual ghost talking to you. Where are you? How old are you? Are you friendly? Where are you? How old are you? Friendly? Where are you? How old are you? Are you friendly? So right there, it didn't talk to us, but that mean that doesn't mean that it's not a spirit box ghost. Sometimes it takes a while for them to talk to you. So it did um, move the chair again, so I can't take a picture for an interaction. It did turn the lights off, so we're gonna turn them on. Can you write in the book, please? So you can you can talk to the ghost. Um, you can ask it to write in the book and stuff like that. It doesn't necessarily mean that it oh did it. So there, it's writing, so I can take a picture. So basically, we already know it's ghost writing. So the only reason I did that was just to try to fill the book. So if you look. Um, we're just trying to fill the book with pictures. The better, the higher quality the picture, the more money you're going to get at the end. Um, the cursed object, the bone, um, a ghost photo are worth the most. Then three star interaction, fingerprint, footstep photos kind of go down from there. Uh, dirty water is the least. You get the least amount of money for dirty water. So if you don't, if you can work it so that you don't have to, um, there really isn't, you can take dirty water photos, but if you can get other photos, you're probably better off trying to get other pictures. Ghost is walking around on us. Do that on. This is walking around on. See, in intermediate, the ghost isn't supposed to move. So, what we can do is we'll, um, we can go and check for orbs. It might be in the living room now, but... So we'll just kind of keep watching. So as you move on kind of through your investigation, you can kind of start crossing certain things. Oh, see, there are the dots. So we know we know right away that we have we have a thing. So that's, and then we only have to do kind of one one more photo. Um, for that, you could go through and hope to try to get a rocking chair, um, stuff like that. But that's basically how I attack the house, um, how I go about finding where the ghost room is, how I set up the ghost room, and gather the evidence um, for the ghost. Usually once I have this part of it locked down and I'm pretty close to figuring out what the ghost is, then that's when I'll look at the board and see kind of what my optional objectives are and start working those off the list and stuff but 
but for this for this episode basically just covering how to attack the house um how to find the ghost room how to set up for the ghost room and how to collect evidence for the ghost so hopefully uh hopefully you guys enjoyed it what we can yeah so we got thay in the book we'll just end it right there so that's basically finding the ghost setting up for the ghost room then it'll kind of load you through to let's see so that's that's the ghost so we did get the first objective so like i said if you're new on you don't have the money uh to do some of the optional if it's you have to repel or escape the ghost and you don't want to this is kind of what you're going to be looking at for payouts um this was on intermediate but but yeah, the optional objectives do add a little bit, a little bit more money. But like I said it's for some people they can't afford the optional, or, or they choose not to do them, or it's just hard to do them. But yeah, that's basically attacking the house, um, figuring out where the ghost room is, setting up for the ghost room, and identifying the ghost. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to like and comment below, and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in episode four. Bye-bye for now.